Your Halloween is going to look a little different, but we want to help you get into the spirit. So let's go to Frankie with ways to spookify your house. Hey, Frank. Woo! Ooh, Tracy, do you, do you love Halloween? I love Halloween. I love dressing up, but mostly I love chocolate. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I love the chocolates. I love decorating. But now how are we going to increase the Halloween spirit where we don't know what's going to be going on with Halloween? I think decorate. Do you love to decorate your home for Halloween? I don't go as crazy as I should, and I think that's because I want stuff that's going to be able to stick around for the rest of fall. So part of what you're standing in right now is very smart because you can keep some of that stuff. You just keep those pumpkins, keep some of that decor right into the fall season. But I, I agree that we should all be doing something a little bit extra because the kids might not be trick-or-treating and it makes me smile every time I see a home that's gone all out with the spooky stuff. Yeah, me too. And, you know, you made that mention too about having things that you can use during the whole fall season. The fall season is not just about Halloween. Of course, we mentioned about the pumpkins. It's also about Thanksgiving. And depending on where you're in Canada or the U.S., Thanksgiving's at a different time of year. There's so many different types of pumpkins, too. And even some of the pumpkins now almost have their own little bit of spook factor as well. You can see. And what's been blended here is a whole bunch of some of the, the older items that we've used on the home, but also some of the newer items. I think one of the keys about making things spooky even though they're so great in the garden, is spiders. Yeah, spiders. Look at that thing creeping down the wall. Oh, and then the spider webs all over the place. One of the creepiest things that can ever happen to you as a person is when you're walking through and you get a spider web that goes across your face. So gross. Right? Oh. And just looking at that kind of creeps it up as mm. well. But in, to increase that creep factor as well, some of the other items that we got from Party City is to create something that's going to be a little bit spooky. And what's good about these as well, not only do they look good at night, they look good during the day. If we're going to be doing trick-or-treating, depending upon where you're living this year, you also got to make sure that you have some safety factors, factors around the property as well, that kids can easily walk in and out. So as you're doing your decor, at the same time, what you're trying to do is to make sure it's safe. Visually, you want to make sure that everything's facing towards where people are going to be seeing it. The little signs themselves are always so easy to kind of pop in there. Those little um, signs to say, are they buried there? Are there zombies there? Easy, but also what's great about these is when we go to store, they all just kind of stack on top of each other. Often we forget, and I've made this mistake before, where I buy all these things for Halloween or even for other seasons, and then I'm like, where am I going to put it? Because <laughs> storage is key after the fact. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're doing some storage as well. Frankie, did you mix a little bit of old with a little bit of new in terms of your decor? Did you take some stuff out from years past? Well, you're building. So each and every year, what you're doing is you're building. You're building uh, from one year to the next. So your little collection, really, that's what this is, is a collection of items that you're curated together that each and every year you can add a few more things. I love this as well. These were just a dollar, but if you take a look, made this a kid's project so the kids could not only decorate the spider itself with a little bit of painting. So what you can do is get the kids involved and also make this kind of a project that's going to burn out some time that they're not going to be online. They're actually doing something creative with their own hands as well. Well, I love that. And I think a lot of parents are always looking for ways to get them off their screen. So doing little Halloween DIYs is a good one. I want to give a tip as well, and when it comes back over to pumpkins, if you want to make your pumpkins last, don't carve them. Only carve them a few days before Halloween. As soon as you go in and carve a pumpkin, it's going to start to break down. So if you're looking to save those pumpkins for a little bit longer and longer and longer, if you're using them for, Hall for Thanksgiving, but then you want them to be for Halloween, don't carve them until a couple days before. What are uh, you and the boys doing for Halloween? Staying in, going out, do you know yet? So we're going to stay in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend Easter and Halloween together. <laughs> so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hiding candies throughout the home, yeah. and we're going to have a Halloween hunt for candies. So instead of doing the trick-or-treating, they're still going to get their candies. We're going to do it safely, but I'm calling it the Great Halloween Hunt. Well, this is what I've been saying forever. I mean, it's about the candy, everyone. So dress up in your costumes, and even if you're staying home or in your backyard, Make sure there's candy and it's all good. It'll be still be a Halloween to remember. Thank you, Frankie. Spooky stuff. I love it. Whoa. Whoa.